Welcome to our review on velocity time graphs. So what I've given you there at the top are two different kinds of graph. On the left, we have a speed time graph. On the right, a velocity time graph. And the only way you can really tell the difference is by looking at the label on the Y axis. So both of those graphs show the same motion of a ball being thrown vertically into the air at an initial speed of 15 meters per second. The gradient of the graph tells you the acceleration on both. The speed time graph, however, only gives us magnitude, so it only tells us the size, whereas the velocity time graph will give us both magnitude and direction, hence why it goes beneath our actual intersect to go into the negative values. So when we're looking at our velocity time graph, we do need to know those key features as to what the lines represent. So when we have a horizontal line, that is a constant velocity. So it could be traveling at 30 miles an hour, for example, but the horizontal line there means it's traveling at 30 miles an hour for that entire period. A diagonal line means constant acceleration. A curved line is a changing acceleration and our gradient this time gives us the acceleration of the object. If you were asked to actually find the acceleration, then the first thing we need to do is find the change in velocity and the change in time from the graph. So in this example here, I've just gone with our little right angle triangle as always going from the zero to the five seconds. So the change in velocity in that case would be plus 20 minus zero, which gives us plus 20 and the change in time, five minus zero, five seconds. We then use the acceleration formula to substitute in those values. So change in velocity divided by the change in time is 20 divided by five, which gives us an acceleration of plus four meters per second squared. Now, because that acceleration is positive, this tells us the object is speeding up. The next thing we need to know is what else we can calculate from these graphs. If it's a speed time graph, then the area underneath the line represents the distance traveled. If it's a velocity time graph, then the area under the line represents the displacement. So we could get the question along the lines of calculate the displacement of the cyclist represented by the green line. And they give you the graph like I have on the right there. So the first thing we do is we actually divide up any odd shapes they may give us in the graph into shapes we know how to calculate the area of. The most likely way to divide them up is into a couple of triangles and a rectangle, as I've shown you on the right there with the blue lines. Once you've divided the shape up into easier to manage areas, then work out the area of each shape you've created. So we've got our two triangles and a rectangle there. So triangle one on the left is always going to be the half times the base times the height. So it's going to be half times four times eight, which gives us 16 as the area of the first one. Second triangle, half times base times height is half times three times eight, which gives us 12. And then the rectangle, just base times height, which is three times eight, which is 24. Then all we need to do to get the total displacement is add those areas together. So 16 plus 12 plus 24 gives us a total displacement of 52 meters. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can interpret velocity time graphs. You can use a velocity time graph to calculate acceleration, and you can use a velocity time graph to calculate the displacement.